friends, welcome back to Little Monkeys and Me, and you're watching episode eight. For those that don't know me, I am Fernanda, and I am your host of this podcast. And for those that do know me, hi, welcome back. I'm so glad to have you. Today, we have a little bit of a darker day. Um, we had some storms and a little bit of rain in the past two days which in reality i absolutely love i love summer storms so we have the ring light today i've never used it before i have had it but we've had really good light but um today it was really really dark so i had to pull out the ring light which i'm hoping it looks okay don't know we shall find out but um like i said i am fernanda I am a homeschool mom to three kids. I live in North Carolina with my husband, my kids, and our puppy, Luna, who is almost seven months old. She is super lovely. She's a Basenji, if you want to go check them out. And my social media, I'm on social media if you want to find me there. Um, that's usually where you will be able to talk to me more. I try to respond to every single one of your, or of your comments, which have been so nice. Uh, but if I can't for some reason um, reply or you want to talk more, come and hop over on Instagram. I am little monkeys and underscore me, and I will put it down below. And on Ravelry, I'm little monkeys, just an N, and then me. I will put it down below too. And then I also have a email, little monkeys and me at gmail.com. <clears throat> you can contact me in all those three forms. If you want to talk to me, uh, we do have a good giveaway winner and I will announce that at the end. So for now, let's move on with our program. It's not really a program with our episode. Um, today, I also have the kids home and which means they are all supposed to stay in the room watching something. We shall see how it goes. I do watch lots of podcasts who have, who are parents and I don't mind if the kids interrupt to tell you the truth, but you know, I did tell my kids, please don't come out. So we shall see. Let's talk about the shawl cow that started yesterday. So if you haven't been here before, we, I announced a cow last episode and it has been going great. We have lots of participants. So my friend Ruth from Ruth Loves Jeanette, she has a podcast. You can hop over to her channel and watch her. She has, I don't know, seven or eight podcasts probably. And so you have lots to catch up on if you want to go check her out. Ruth and I decided to do a shawl cow for the summer. So it's running from yesterday, July 1st, till September 30th. And you're welcome to start whenever you want. You can go to Ravelry. I have a group and we have a chatter group and a FO. So if you don't know what an FO means, it's a finished object. So when you're done with your shawl, you take a picture and then you can just put it there. There's no chatter. We're not going to be able to reply to each other, but that's where we would go. So then I can go and pick a winner. <clears throat> then we have a chatter, like I said, where we're posting and we're talking about it, like what patterns we've chosen. If you cannot access Ravelry, you can hop to Instagram and there's a lot of hopping. Can we just say, let's go to Instagram and go to my profile. Um, you can read more about the, sh the cow there, but it's all shawls. You don't have to do an, a specific pattern. You can, um, you can knit or crochet whips, which are works in progress, only if they're 25% or less done and let me see what else no cowls no scarves just shawls it can be a one skein shawl it can be a many skein shawl it's up to you use the hashtag across the pond shawl cow and i think that's all the things i have to say about it last episode was the giveaway episode and everyone got to comment about something that they were happy about that that had just happened or something they were looking forward to and it was so so nice to read all your comments so many wonderful things and yeah I have to say probably 95% or more of the things that people wrote about was that they were grateful that they could meet with friends or family again and at the end of the day that's what it's all about 
it's our family and the people we love and our friends. So that was really, really nice. So if you want a little bit of goodness, go read the comments on the last episode. So let's go ahead and start. Now that I've taken care of that information, let's go ahead and start. The usual way that I do my podcast is that I start with my finished objects or FOs. And if you haven't been here before, I usually do a podcast about once a month. But it is summer. I do homeschool, so I'm pretty busy during the year. But I figured, let's see if we can do it every two weeks and let's see if I like it. Because I always feel like, okay, I'm not going to have that much to say if I just do it for two weeks. But then I wait for a month and I have so much to say that the episode is so long. Uh, Which I know many of you have said you don't mind long episodes. I actually don't mind long episodes. I watch them and if I can't finish it, I just come back later when I do have time to come finish an episode of somebody else. But, you know, let's see. In, In reality... Fernanda and short doesn't go together unless you're talking about my height <laughs> because I can talk forever. So let's go ahead and move on because here I am saying I'm going to do every two weeks to not be so long and I can talk probably still for an hour. So let's move on to finish objects. So let's start with the first one that I want to talk about. Let's do our socks. So I showed you last time that I had this yarn from Desert Vista Dye Works. And I'm sure you probably have seen these um, going all around Instagram because these are her official colorway for um, Summer Sock Camp 2021 that has been run by the Crazy Sock Lady on Instagram and on Ravelry. So these are my normal vanilla socks. Vanilla socks meaning not a specific pattern kind of like a recipe that you just have that fits your feet and you know it doesn't have anything other than probably stocking it and a two by two well I like a two by two rib um I just love the way that they look and I like the one by one I have no problem but I think I just love the way that a two by two rib um is I do a German twisted cast on for it so it gives it a little bit more elasticity Then I do about 20 rounds of my rib. Then I do 30 for my leg. Um, I do an eye of partridge for my heel flapping gusset for a moment. I forgot how to say that. (sighs) Then I decrease, obviously, just like normal. And then I do 60 stitches for my, my foot. And then I do, I believe this is called a wedge toe. Last time I couldn't remember what the name or I didn't even know. I think it is, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, But I think it's called a wedge toe, which means you just decrease every other round um, on the sides. So, and that's it. And this yarn is beautiful. I mean, I know that you have probably all seen lots of beautiful pictures, but look at the eye of partridge. It is so pretty in that color. Oh, sorry. And this came with a 20 gram, I believe it was 20 grams, of this contrasting color that I use for my toes, my heel, and my cuff. And this is the main color. And I pretty much ran out of all the con- the 20 gram one for me, but I think I have probably about 50 grams of my of my skein for the main color which means I can make a whole nother pair because I can get a pair usually out with depending on the yarn usually I can get a pair maybe with less than 50 um and if not I can do a contrasting with contrasting colors I can do you know with other leftover color I can do a contrasting heel and I can make a whole nother pair so I might make one for me, or you can do shorties too, if you have not that much left. That is also an option. And I know that Kay from the Crazy Sock Lady also came out with a tutorial on how to pretty much transform any pattern you have into a shorties sock. So go take her out if you really want to try that, especially if you don't have tons of leftover yarn, but it too much that you don't want to put into a blanket because it's like 50 grams, like that's just crazy. I mean, you could if you want to put it in a blanket, but 
you know, if you don't want to, then you can make shorties, which is an option. So that's my first um, FO. Then the other one, let me talk to you about this one. So last time I showed you my Croft um, yarn, um, well, it's called the Croft from um, West Yorkshire Spinners. <laughs> and um, hopefully you can see the color well, because I don't know, it's super dark outside. And then it's already kind of dark in this um, sunroom, which, you know, kind of a uh, oxymoron um which is obviously kind of funny since it is a sunroom but today it's, it's kind of a dark day and um now i don't remember and i don't know where i left <sighs> just a minute let me go get it i'm back so this i wanted to show you this is still how much i have left from that for those socks so this is definitely going to be used again and this is how much i have from um this this is iron weight which means it's pretty close to worsted and it comes with a hundred it's a hundred gram skein and it let me see if it has stony brook maybe is the name as the number in a 759 that might be the colorway and this is 100 percent shetland island wool by west Yorkshire spinners it's super nice very shippy i don't think it's too itchy but i can handle itchy yarn so this is to me it's fine but let's talk about the pattern because i didn't really use a pattern i i wanted to talk about a cool app i don't know if you've heard it it's called bellish b-e-l-l-i-s-h and the app pretty much helps you come up with your own pattern if like you give her some like not give her give it some specifications like i just wanted an because i really didn't want to swatch it was late at night and i just wanted to cast on a new project that was quick and i wanted to use this yarn because uh for the giveaway i'm giving away one skein it's a different colorway but um i one skein of this yarn and i wanted to say i wanted to see what you can make with one skein of iron weight because you know with one skein of fingering you can make quite a bit of things but one skein of iron weight it kind of gets you know you can't make as many things so i was wondering oh what can i make and then i thought oh well i'll just make my husband a hat and but i didn't want to swatch I didn't want to swatch or or come up with a number and I didn't want to like start the the rib and then try it on him and it wouldn't fit so I remember that I had downloaded that app and in that app you put you want to put make a hat and there are some already kind of cool um stitches that you can use and you can choose that or you can just choose a plain and that's kind of what I did. But I just really wanted this because I made hats lots of times. I just didn't know how many to cast on. And that's really what I did. I just got the number of stitches that I needed for an adult hat. And I think it gives you adult big and adult normal or medium. I just did the medium. And it's a free app. I don't know if you can maybe upgrade it. I'm sure if maybe if you pay. I don't know if you have to pay. I haven't looked into it. I just have the free one. And so then I did the rib for as long as I wanted it. And then uh, it's, it's, I'm going to insert a picture in a little bit. Um, and then I just did a normal kind of like decrease at the top. And then I put it all together. So it is a beanie hat for my husband. And he looks super cute in it. He loved it. Well, okay, here's the thing. The first night, it was really late. I was, he fell asleep on the couch while I was watching Midsummer Murders, who else loves that show? I mean, um, I have watched all 20 seasons. Yes. With my husband. He he really did like it. He was just tired that night. And it was like, but I was like, oh, I'm just going to cast on. And I finished that. And then I was trying it on him while he was sleeping. <laughs> He's such a sweet. I mean, I am not a very nice wake wrapper when it comes to... Um, People waking me up and just a minute. Okay, where was I? There was first interruption. Um, oh, I tried it on him and it fit. 
and he was like super out of it when I woke up. I was like, I, I figured I'm just gonna let him keep sleeping. I'll put it on him. I just need to know if it fits so I can fasten it off and just weave in the ends. And um, cause I am a, I like to weave in it. I know I'm weird, but um, I don't mind it. I find it very like, I'm like, okay, I'm finished this beautiful object. Now I'm gonna take care of the ends that can be look beautiful. That's just me. But I wanted to weave in the end and, you know, to know for sure that it was going to work. So I was putting it on. He was like, what's going on? I was like, just try on the hat. He tried it on. And and he's like, well, it fits, but it's a little kind of tight. You know, it doesn't come all the way. I mean, it did, but it, was, it almost felt like it was going to like, boom, come off. So I was like, oh, and he's like, why are you angry? I'm like, I'm not mad. Just go back to sleep. So that night it was too late. So the next the next day I un unraveled before the decreasing. I did another inch or so. I made him try it on again. Um, and then I decreased and it fits. And I love the fit. He loves the fit and he loves the hat. Of course, he it's summer. And also he wouldn't be allowed to be wearing it until we showed in the podcast. Just kidding. No, but it's really summer, so he hasn't worn it. But it's really cute. It turned out so pretty. Um, I was so afraid, and I think that's I mean, uh, the rib. I like the rib. Uh, I think it was probably about two inches of rib, and it's two by two because I love two by two rib. And I probably could have done it longer. I just was so afraid. I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I don't make tons of adult hats because. Um, I just don't make a lot of hats usually. I, I go through f faces. I used to make a lot of hats and then I don't. And then I make other things. So I was afraid that I was not going to have enough. But I have plenty. So now I need to figure out what I'm going to do with this tiny bit left. I think I waited, but I can't remember how much it is. So that is my second FO. This is during uh, literally in one night. I just did it in a few hours. And we had family come over. We had family in town. And we spent about a week just not being home we were going to my in-laws house and we were spending all this time with family that we haven't seen in a very long time so that was so wonderful which all but also meant i couldn't get certain knitting because even though i don't mind knitting and talking sometimes you just want to talk you know i just get into the conversation or there were some pat some things that i just had to pay more attention to and i couldn't just talk um, that's why I finished these in like two days because I was just talking and knitting a lot. So are those my, oh no, here's my next. So I finished three things and this one was also, um, I think you'll recognize the yarn. So this is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Tweed. This is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. And in the colorway, I think it's Garnet Heather. Yeah, heart Garnet Heather. So if you've been here before, you would have seen probably in the last two episodes or so that I made my my oldest, I don't think you'll hear, but I made my oldest a Harry Potter sweater with the same color. So if you want to check it out, you can go to the last episode. And I... It, it, I had leftover yarn, so I I don't like having too much leftovers. I try to use as much as I can, mostly because I have a lot of different people to also knit in my for my life in my life. So I have people of all different sizes, and if I can find something that can you know be useful for any of my kids or family, then I will use leftover yarn before. I buy more yarn. Not that I haven't bought yarn, but you know, I, I don't have a huge stash. I, I mean, probably what I have as a stash is the other per person would think that it's like a one time buy, but you know, we're all different. So this is the Hobbit vest by Froggy Net. It, she's Froggy Net on Instagram and she also has a podcast. But let me tell you, because I think her name is Lisa. Yeah, Lisa Chemery. I think that's how you say her last name. Or it could be Chemery. Chemery? I don't know. Froggy Met. And um, this was such a fun, fun knit. 
So I've had this pattern actually in my Ravelry for a little while, waiting to be made and waiting to find the correct, the correct yarn. And when I looked at the pattern, it said that I needed a lot more yardage than what I had left over. But I was like, I'm going to try it anyways. If I need more, then I can buy one more ball of this. I, I'll use up all the leftovers and I can, I can buy like one more ball and, you know, I won't feel bad. The, the whole thing is not not ever buying. It's using what I have. So if I have to buy one more ball, you know, and use a lot of it, that's fine with me. So I, start, I so started it super nervous that I was not going to have enough, but I even still have a little bit left over which I don't have with me, but it's just a little bit. It's not tons. And I didn't swatch. <laughs> surprise, surprise. But it was for my son. It's for my four-year-old. So he is so excited and he looks so stinking cute. Um, he loves it already. So let's talk about the construction of this. This is done back and forth and you start at the bottom and obviously it's a paper pattern so I can't tell you like all the details but I do love the texture of the stitches which is really like a double seed stitch I think that's kind of what it's called and um I had made pockets before and these are very easy to make um it has lining that you know, and super easy, super easy to make. So you start at the bottom, back and forth. Um, you get to the part of the, of the pockets, you add the pockets and you keep going until you get to this part where you're going to start decreasing. And that's when you break it into, you're gonna cast off some st stitches and you're gonna do the front panel of the left, the front panel of the right, and then you're also gonna do the back panel and it tells you what to do. And then at the end, you're gonna join up, up here, and then you're gonna pick up stitches for the button band that it's gonna go all around, all the way to the bottom, and then you will pick up the stitches for the armhole. And that's really it. It is a really nice pattern, it was well written, I love how squishy it is because of the stitches. It does, ha I did put my little tag and these, I made these, well, I didn't make them, but I paid for them to be made. These wooden, let me see if you can see them. These wooden buttons that say, this was before I made it little monkeys and me. So it just says little monkey and me, but it's okay. Uh, I'm not going to waste a whole thing of buttons. I actually have, I have a lot of them left over. So, because I don't add them to every single thing, but I thought they looked super cute with this. So yeah, so this is my Hobbit sweater, no, vest. And I highly recommend this one. I use size four because my son is four. And even though I could have gone up to a six, I, I was super nervous that I didn't have enough but then six I think would have been a little too big for him and because he's a normal size four-year-old and he's not super big uh he's slim so it fits him really well and in reality I can knit him another one if this one turns out to be small by the end of whenever so I'll just make him another one but this was a super fun knit I will like always I really try to link everything on the box below. So if you know how to get to that, if you're watching this, there should be like a little arrow, like pointing down usually, and you click on that and it will open up more information about. And then you can go down and you can click on all the things. I'll I'll, I'll link the, the yarn and the pattern so you can go and check it out. And um, I also try to write things down on the video so you can also take notes if you want to go and look at it later so those were all my finished objects let's move on to our whips so whips are works in progress if you don't know 
what that means. And let's start with, oh, mom, you can't look. Mama, apaga el teléfono. <laughs> so, mommy, you can't look. So please go because this is gonna be for her birthday. So assuming my mom left the video because she does like to watch. My She made my dad watch and he about died. <laughs> Not because he doesn't love me, of course. Um, but I didn't expect, I mean, when I started the, the podcast, I told him, I was like, I'm doing this, but you'll not, none of you have to watch. In reality, it's kind of weird when they tell me they've watched it. I'm like, Ugh. um, but I, like, really, I was like, you guys don't have to watch. Like, I understand this is a very specific, like, kind of video that only it's for certain audience. And my dad, I, I can barely talk to him about my knitting. I can't imagine him watching an hour of me talking about my knitting. So, but I do know what my mom likes to watch. And my brother, he's so sweet. One of my brothers, he does watch. But, um, so these are the Bronte, Bronte, the sister socks that my friend Catherine Smart from Punto Raso, she just released this pattern. So last time, I think. I did show you my other socks that I made for myself and I already put them away. I'm not going in there, but they're in the last episode and I loved this pattern. I will try to do a close up of all the video, all the things that I, I, I show you or at least a picture or something so then you can see what they look like. But it is a beautiful, beautiful pattern. It is super easy to make is addicting it is fun it is worth it to me it's it is worth every penny she does such a good job so i i tested these for her and i am i finished one sock and i'm on the second one and i have nothing to say about this pattern other than i love it i mean it is in spanish and i did mention that last time so if you don't speak spanish that obviously kind of makes it a little bit more difficult, right? You could Google Translate. Actually, a lot of Chileans, um, my friends who are knitters in Chile, that's what they do. They buy a lot of English patterns and they just, they learned a lot of the terminology of um, English patterns, you know, all of our abbreviations and, and things they've learned. And the things they don't get, they Google Translate and then they figure out patterns. I'm not saying you have to do that, but you know, it's doable. The other option is that it, it is charted. So as long as you know how to make a sock and you're pretty comfortable with a sock pattern, you can do as much as you want for rib, then you do as much as you want for the, for the chart, and then you do whatever heel you want. And then, you know, you do the foot, like the actual bottom of the foot, you do stocking at on the top, you do the actual pattern part. And then I did a wedge toe. And if it's not a wedge toe, well, I'll keep on saying wedge toe the whole episode, which turned out, you know, pretty. It is all so beautiful. I love it. This is one, it, I did block this. And I don't block all my socks, mostly because sometimes I just make it into my feet before I need to block it. But you know, something like this, you wanna block it because then you can really see it. Plus it's a gift. And, it, and the yarn was already really soft, but it made it even softer. So yeah, cause you can see here, like you can't appreciate that as much. I mean, obviously I, I don't have that much. So these are on my nine inch uh, Chiago. And this one are in 2.25s, I believe, because that's what the pattern called for. And I liked the way she wrote her pattern, so I figured I will do it that way. And let's talk about the yarn. I have never tried this yarn before. So when my sister-in-law was here, she's one of the ones who was um who was visiting with her son and um and my nephew's baby. Well, he's almost two years old. Oh, so cute. Um, oh, just so cute. I love little kids. I love kids, period. But we went to our local yarn store and, and yarn store. 
And if you've been here before, I've told you that we have two local yard stores that are really close to me. One of them, I almost can never find anything there. It's also a more of like an embroidery store and they have more things about embroidery and, and cross stitching, but not, not enough yarn that tempts me enough to go there. And then the other one that we do have is better, but it's, it's fun to browse and to look for certain things. But like when I'm looking for a specific, okay, I want to, cause that's the other way. That's the way I shop. And that's maybe that's why for me it's hard in this shop. It's because I don't just buy yarn usually. I, I don't just go to a shop and buy yarn because I like it. I go with a purpose and with a, with a pattern in mind. Or at least I look through my Ravelry and see which ones I bought and I'm like, oh yes, that one. I want to, because if I bought it, it's because at some point I wanted to make it. So then I can do that. But even then, sometimes I've gone and I'm like, there's nothing. But there's always sock yarn. Always sock yarn. So I did buy this one. I had never tried it before. And it's called, it's Lang Yarn. And the, so Lang Yarns is the brand. And then Jowl is the kind of yarn that it is. And it's a Yowl Super Wash, which these come in 50 grams. Um, little... <laughs> I mean, little ball. That is not a ball. Whatever this is. Hank, this is not a hank or a skein. Let's call it a skein. But it's not quite. Um, it's 50 grams and 75.25. The cool thing, though, that I didn't... Inside here, so... Woo, in the middle, you know, like usually when you pull your yarn. This little spool comes in it. And this is also yarn, but it's very, very, it's finer than the, the other yarn. And it is a reinforcement yarn. And what it is, is that you use this for your toes and your heels. So it makes it thicker. So I did use it. My mom is not huge at destroying socks, but I figured, hey, I bought this yarn and I want to try it out. I've never, like I said, this is my first time, so I've never tried this, so I can't tell you if it's going to really, really, really um, enhance the life of your sock, but you can tell, I mean, you can really feel how much thicker it is on the toes and on the heel. And I did it all the way to here, all the way to turning the heel too, because this is technically like, you're still, st if you destroy your heel quite a bit, it might be right here. So I did it all the way there. So I will let you know. I mean, as my mom uses it, let's see how long. But my mom is super careful with her clothing and all her things, things that I make her. She's so, so careful with them that she might not be the best parameter when it comes to, um, to this. But if you are looking for something similar to this, go check out this yarn. I don't know who sells that because I bought it at my local yarn store, but I will do a Google search and I will try to find it and hopefully link it. If I cannot link it, I will just write it down, down, down there and you can go look for it maybe at your local yarn store. But I thought it was really cool. And so I bought two, two of these um, to make, to make, you know, my mom's socks. So I have two of these. And the first one, this is brand new, but the first one I didn't even use all of it. So I wonder if I can even, uh, I might weave it in with other sock yarn. And you know, it might make up a little bit of a marled effect, but it's such a pretty color. It is, um, I don't know if it has a color way. Speaking of, I just see a number, 20123. That's all I see. And if you can hear my kids start laughing, who knows what they're watching. And so yeah, it is very soft, very lovely. I I hope it's really good to wear. We will see, but I think it'll be great. It's just a normal sock yarn. Let's move on to the next one. So as you know, we're talking about the yarn store that I went to. Well, let's talk about So this was probably the most exciting thing that happened when I went to the yarn store. So I was walking around and towards the front of the store, there was a sign. Um, I might take a picture. I mean, I have a picture. I might put it in here. 
but there was a sign of next to some skeins of yarn and it is local yarn completely rustic it has undyed this is the color of the sheep it's like it's a nice light brown color it still has tons it has quite a bit of hay which i don't mind i i am i weird when i get giddy and happy as i'm knitting and i pull out a little bit of i mean it's not tons okay i'm not maybe that's an exaggerated but it's a good amount like every time i knit i have a little tiny pile of hay but am i the only one who like feels very excited when you're knitting and you're taking out hay out of your yarn it might be weird i don't know but so this is local to north carolina these ship this no ship this these sheep are from north carolina and they are Cordell. So let's talk a little bit about it. This is the Haggett Cordell Yearling, which means Haggett, I think that's how you say it. Um, it is a really young lamb, probably between their first or second year, in between that. And this is a yearling. It's probably really young within the year, and it's probably its first spring and summer. So when they were sheared, they didn't have as much wool, but they were, they were sheared anyways. And so this wool is a little extra soft, softer than probably a full groom. And it's actually really soft. I, I mean, I find Cordell's not to be itchy anyways, but this is very soft. And let's go for a teaching moment, if, we, if you may. Just indulge me for a moment. So... Cordell's have a micron count between 25 and 30. No, 28 and 35. Let me look at my trusty book. If you haven't gotten this book, this is a really fun book. There's also a really big one of these that I want to get. But this is like the one that you can carry with you. Because I do. Like if you go to a, a, a yarn store and you're reading all about the yarn and you're like, oh, I wonder how this is going to react. Well, Come and look in here and we can find out. But Cordell has usually oh, 25 to 35 microns. So a micron, it is the measurement of the diameter of a, um, it describes the diameter of a wool fiber. So depending on how thin and thick it is. And also, you know, because just like our, our, our hair, wool has little scales on it okay so depending on how the the micron count it is the the less of a micron count the softer usually is and the thicker or bigger micron count it's rougher okay and then but that is not the only thing you have to think of the spinning and how everything there's a little bit more but that is just a rough a rough way for you to know like for example merino wool it's like 24 i think something like that and it is one of the softest um actually i can look it up uh merino wool can oh okay so 24 is like the average but it can go all, down all the way to 11.5 to 26 microns so that's why it's known to be like a super super soft yarn and then you have other ones that are a lot a lot um itchier if you want to say i think this is super cool i love learning about yarn and cordell is actually a it's mostly the yarn that we have in chile so if you don't know i'm a real i'm originally from chile chile and so we have Cordell wool is commonly shipped from Chile through the port of Punta Arenas, which is really down on the south, and called Punta, or PA. So we have a lot of Cordell in Chile. So I thought it was so fun to be able to find it. So this was fun and local to me. And, okay, I lie. I don't know where it was fun, but I think it was locally. But it was definitely race here. The name of the sheep was Zoe. 
And where do I go with all of this? This was DK weight. It had 250 uh, gram, no, 250 yards for 100 grams. So I bought three. Why? Because I wanted to make this. So this is, oops, remember, is a whip. And I can tell you more about it. I wanted to make the Humlibby. Humlibby? Humlibby? Humlibby shawl. How many times can I say this? This is the shawl by Fiber Tales. And it's the one that has the little bees. I'm going to do a close up because I don't think you'll be able to appreciate the beautiful bees. And um, let's talk about the pattern. It's a paper for pattern, so you know that I can't give you all the details, so I won't tell you how to make the bees or anything. But she does have a really good video. So it's really not a hard one. You're gonna have a lot of garter, especially the whole body of the of the of the shawl is all garter stitch. So once you're past this, the beginning, then you're good to go. So this is long, right? <laughs> because this is down bottom up, which I usually don't make them this way. I usually make from like the tiny bit and then you start increasing. So this was a lot of stitches to cast on. But after that, you start decreasing in every row. So in reality, it should go faster and faster, right? You do start with a pico cast on, which I have never done. I've always done pico bind offs, but never, never a cast on. So just a tip. If you are making this, make sure that you do that pico cast on tight. Like that little, the little tiny thing, make sure you do it tight. Because I had done all of it. I had gone before the bees. So I was like to here, probably. This was the first time I cast it on. And I was so bothered. I don't know if I took a picture of it, but I was so bothered because I kept... There were a lot of the, the Pico cast-ons that were just too loose and they were it made a hole instead of the little lip that kind of has to come out. I mean, yes, you will always have a tiny hole. I mean, if you really, really pull, okay, there's a hole. But these were much more noticeable. And I, was, I really didn't like it. But I just kept knitting. I mean, do you do this too? And you, you're like, oh, it's fine. No one's going to care. I'm going to be okay. It's going to be at the bottom of the shawl. I'm not going to snug it. But that, it, trying to convince myself, right, as I'm knitting. Okay, it's good, fine. Well, I kept knitting and I got to this part. And I'm like, ugh, I can't stand it. I need to make, I, I need to redo it. And my husband's like, what? But you just spent hours on this, on this much. Because really, I mean, by the time that you the cast on, which takes a while because there's a lot of stitches and you have to do, you have to do a pico cast on, which means it takes a little bit longer. It's not just casting out a bunch of stitches. Um, and then I did a, I don't know how many, that's probably like 12 or 13 rows of a very long, very long shawl. I, he's like, you've just taken, like, what do you mean? You've been doing that much for hours. And it's like, it's okay. It's okay because I enjoy knitting and I don't mind ripping back. Um, do I like it when I make a mistake and I'm like, oh, then I have to debate whether I want to uh, rip back. And I don't always. I don't always rip back. There are times when you can do a duplicate stitch and you can fix the problem. Or another time when the problem is really not noticeable other than to you. And, it's, and if it doesn't bother you enough, you can move on. But... There are times when I just know, I mean, I was so excited when she released this pattern and um, they did it in a collaboration um, with some yarn and this bag actually, where it's being housed. This is from the Blue Rabbit House. If I don't have it that right. Oh, I can just, I keep forgetting people put tags in their things. Yeah, the Blue Rabbit House. She lives in Belgium, I want to say. And it's it's beautiful. I talked about this bag last time. I absolutely love that bag. And there was 
there was a whole collab and I wanted I wanted to get that but that was a little bit out of my budget but I went ahead and got the the pattern because I knew that at some point I wanted to make it because I love her patterns and this is fiber tails and so I just knew how excited I was to make this and I knew that if I if I didn't go back and fix that then I would be upset so I went back and I fixed it and then every row was just pure happiness because you know before you're trying to convince yourself and you're just not sure and I've said this before but for me knitting it's fun the moment that it turns to be a chore or you're just not enjoying it then why are you doing it because it's supposed to be enjoyable this is what I do in my time off this is what I do to make me happy and <clears throat> if I'm gonna be suffering or just not happy or not happy at the end with it and why are we doing this? Why are we spending the time and effort and money? So <clears throat> I went ahead and broke back and I started over and I was just so happy. I'm like, oh, this looks so much better. And I, I do, I mean, I love it. Once I block it and I pull, you know, those little ends, it's gonna look so good. And then I got past the, the cute little bees and I was, I already had done the flower part. So it's like a little bit more and I posted it on, on Instagram and I'm going to put the picture here and it, so you can notice something is that I made a mistake, which I didn't even notice. And I thought it looked just fine, but somebody pointed it out, which I am so glad she did. Okay. I'm not saying that she was mean about it. She asked me, do you mean to make that extra knit row, which looks like a pearl? Cause I obviously knit it. I knitted on the pearl side. You know, kind of like what you do in a garter stitch. And I was, I was like, what? No, I didn't mean to do that. So I had a pearl band all underneath the little bees, which in reality, I mean, is that a horrible thing? No, it didn't look bad. Not really, but once I, uh, once I saw it, again, I was like, oh, I can't. I tried and my husband's like, it looks great. My mom was like, it looks beautiful still. And I was like, I know, but I really wanted to make this pattern so much that I wanted it to look like what it looks like. So I just ripped back. I ripped back right underneath the, the bees. So I ripped back, well, I ripped back like the flower, which was a lace, but it's a very simple lace. And then I ripped back all the, all the little bees. And I ripped back that one. I pearl like you should have. And then I started the bees again. Um, I did put it away for like three days because I was like, I used to go to the naughty corner. And then I took, I, I got it back a few days ago and I, I did redo. So now I need to keep working on it now that I'm happy with how it looks. And, you know, if you're okay with leaving things like that, that's really fine. I mean, it is your knitting. It is your creation don't don't worry about it and if you can't stand any mistake well then go ahead and rip it back and do it again the only thing I I I I, I like a balance you know I like a balance and things so if it's going to make it that you don't won't pick up okay if the mistake you can live with it but you you don't wear it later then maybe you can't live with it <laughs> So, or you don't use it because that mistake is so noticeable, then maybe you need to start going back and be like, okay, that extra work would be worth it later. So a little bit of balance there. Or if you're to the extreme, but you have to rip back and you rip back so many times that then you hate the project, then maybe you need to let go a little and be okay with small mistakes. Start with small mistakes. Don't start with huge things. But, you know, there are some things that I can let go and some things that I just... I'm okay with going back, especially because I was, I only, yes, it was hours of work, but at the same time, it is so small, way easier to rip back when I only had this much than when I had the whole shawl on. And then I looked at it and I'm like, it's going to bother, bother me every single time I wear it. So just my two cents on frogging. Frogging means ripping back. So that is my hum Libby. Hum Libby shawl. I talked about that. And let's talk about my other shawl that I cast it on. Because we are doing shawls for 
for our cow. And I had no idea there was actually a shawl name across the pond shawl. And when somebody pointed it out, I think when we posted about our cow on Instagram and and Ruth told me about it and I was like, oh, I had no idea. She's like, are you making it? I'm like, I don't know. Let me go check it out. I saw it and I really liked it. So I knew I had to cast it on. And then my friend Ruth, oh, Ruth, I know I've said thank you so many times. You're probably like, oh, it can. I just, I just, I'll put a picture of what they look like before I cake them up because, but here they are. Oh, they smell so good. Do you also smell your wools? Like, do you smell your yarn? Because I love, like, I love smelling my yarn. And I have to, like, remember, like, can I do this at the store? <laughs> I mean, really quick. But um, these are two skeins that Ruth sent me. So thank you. Um, these are Wooly Mammoth fiber company so these are emma's yarn if you haven't watched her podcast the woolly mammoth podcast you need to go watch it emma is a delight she's from northern ireland and just like ruth is and she dies she tries as much as possible to and i talked about it in my last episode because these are yarns that i've been wanting for a very long time and, and, and Ruth, she knows me and she sent me a gift and it was so nice, but ugh, I got distracted again. But, um, Emma, she sources her yarn from Northern Ireland. I think she, I don't know if there's a spinnery there, but she tries, it's still in the UK where she spins her yarn if it's not in Northern Ireland. And then she dyes it herself. And these are all naturally dyed. And she does such a good job. I mean. And it feels wonderful. This is her sock base. So let me tell you what they're called. Because I did. I did keep. Um, the little. Tag. So her beautiful tag. This is her natural sock. 50% BFF, 50% Cheviot wool. And it says source, spun, and made in the UK. And the fiber origin is also in the UK. And this is 100 grams, which is 400 meters of her four ply fingering weight. And this is the Color War Wildflower Light Number One. So it's it's like a um, mauvey lavender color. It's beautiful. It is so beautiful. You can see the difference. Like, this is a little bit more lavender. This is a little bit more mauve color. I love this color. I love this color and like a pink, like a rose pink. Oh, gorgeous. And then she gets me this, which kind of looks like off-white, but not really. Because it also has like a hint of pink in it. And this one is called Jasmine, number four. So that's just has to do with like the dye lots that she does. But this will be the contrasting. I might, let me put a picture of what the shawl looks like. I probably would have done it already maybe. And so as you can see, this is gonna be my main color. This is gonna be the lace at the bottom. And this is what the shawl is looking like now. I might have to make a close up of this because I might even showing you the right, yeah, the right side. Um, it's a very, very simple eight count repeat, like eight row repeat for the whole entire part of the main body. And the cool thing, which I really did enjoy from her, and I didn't even tell you who it, so it's across the shawl, no, across the pawn shawl by Mina Phillip, which is called the Knitting Expat on Instagram. And what I really liked about her pattern is that she gives you the num after every row she gives you the um, I know that's so nice she gives you the stitch count so then you can make sure that after each row repeat you 
have the right amount of stitches because you will be increasing uh, a bunch of stitches on each repeat. So it's super helpful. I, you know, I've been watching TV while I make it. It's, it's really not hard. And I'm like seven repeats in out of 15. So almost halfway. And I made, I'm making, there's one skein shawl or two skein shawl. So I think it's awesome. And I'm loving it. It is beautiful to knit up. Oh, I just love the smell. Okay, it's a little sheepy, but it's not super strong sheepy smell, which I don't mind strong sheepy smell. But it's beautiful. I am excited. We are enjoying the shawl cow. I'm enjoying watch and seeing, watching and seeing what you guys are making. I know that um, there are a few people who are also making the Hamlibby show, and I know maybe some people might be making this one, one or two people. I know that Ruth might, I don't know if she will at the end, but it is super fun. I have no idea how long I've been talking. <sighs> I told you, I can talk a long time. Doesn't matter if I make it every two weeks or I can't do it every week, but you know, if you don't mind me talking, then this is happening. So let me talk to you. So that's all my whips. Now I'm going to talk about acquisition. So I hopefully you stick around if you want to look at some of the things I bought. Not all of it was bought recently. They just came. But let's go ahead and start with this one. So the Wooly Thistle is uh, the shop that I love here in the United States. She is um, the owner. She's had this online. It's only online. It's not a brick and mortar. And it's the Willie Thistle. She is uh, thinking New Hampshire. And her name is Corrine. And she is from Scotland. But she's lived in the U.S. for a lot of years. Like over 20 years. And why do I love her shop? It's because she brings in UK yarn that we otherwise would have to pay quite a bit to get in here. So she was making a Jameson's of Shetland Spindrift. Um, they had a little sale of getting six pack. You didn't get to choose the colors. These are lovely. So let's talk about this one. This one is called Yellow Ochre and it's beautiful. If you have worked with Jameson's and Jameson Smith also has this, but Jameson uh, of Shetland this um they're all like heathered so they're not just one i mean not all of them but most of them are and this one is called sand i have no idea what that light is doing to it but it is it is like a light color but it also has a bit of pink in it oh it's beautiful then we have this one is called titanic and it's blue but it's like it's um it's like a light blue dark blue and it has a little bit of red in it so many different colors it is gorgeous then i have three colors that are uh, this one that is just pure natural white which i love i love natural white that's probably one of my favorite um lichen which is, it's like a gray, but also greenish. It's really cool. Oh, beautiful. Oh, I just love them all. And this one is called Sheila or Shayla. I don't know how to say that. And it's a gray, dark gray with light grays. So they're all, except for this one, they're all a bit heathered and they're gorgeous. And all of them go so well together. I mean, You can totally do color work with all these colors and they will look gorgeous together. I love them all. So they did a wonderful job. You didn't get to pick the six colors, but you did get a discount for getting them all um, all together in these little packets. So I went ahead and got that. Um, Cause I just, like I said, I absolutely love their, I love them. And speaking of them, you're not gonna believe it. Okay. I, yesterday I got a, a message from um, Maggie who works for the Wooly Thistle and she said that she knew that we were doing a cow and I'm like 
what? <laughs> I was like, okay. And when she heard about it, they wanted to give a gift card as one of the prices for our cow. And I was like, absolutely yes. Because she asked me, she's like, would you like one? I was like, yes. Of course I would like to give my my followers and everyone else who's participating a gift card. So this is for the cow, so it's for the end of the cow. They're giving away a hundred dollars gift card for their store. I said a hundred. Yes. Am I excited? Am I wishing that I could win this? Yes. Um, believe me, I'm so very jealous that um, one of you <laughs> is gonna get this, but I'm also so happy that one of you will get this because you will, I mean, if you live in the US, then you're gonna be able to get beautiful yarn that we usually can't get here. And, um, and if you don't, I mean, it's yarn. <laughs> so it's so exciting. And yeah, so that is one thing. Let's move on to my next acquisition. I have to tell you about this. This is so special. So this is from a viewer and a follower on Instagram. Her name is Andy. And I said thank you to her so many times too. But she contacted me and she said, I have this, which was from a Harry Potter, um, what are they called? Um, like subscription? What's it called? Ah, I can't think of the word. Collection? No. But you know, like when you subs club, club maybe. And, um, and she said, it's not quite my color. Would you like it? And she didn't show me what it was, but she's like, it's, it has blue. And I was like, yes, I like blue. Plus I knit for so many people in my family and my husband and my kids, uh, which my husband and my son, both of them were like, I like that. <laughs> So she said, this was a Harry Potter, plus we're both Harry Potter fans. This was a Harry Potter collection and it's called Godfather, which if you have been watching Harry Potter at all, or if you've read the books, then you know that Sirius Black is his Godfather. And this is so good. And it's so beautiful. Thank you, Andy. It is perfect. And it comes with a little stitch marker, which is really cute. Let me see if I can take it out and show you kind of a cool stitch marker there you go and so that's that and I was like sure and she was so sweet I was like I mean I, I don't even know I don't even know what to say when people are so kind to me I <sighs> thank you so much and and then she sent me two more I wasn't expecting that at all this is gorgeous look at this so it has like off-white yellow pink kind of a teal color it's beautiful I don't even know what I'll make with this but this is so beautiful and it is by let me tell you twigs and twine yarn company dyed by the hand handmaker's bag and it is high twist single sock 100% superwash merino and it's 100 grams 400 yards and this is called hoppy or happy birthday hooray maybe i can't read that last word but it's happy birthday something it's beautiful it is so beautiful it's very soft and squishy and the last one is this one by linden wool and it's a tonks uh it's socks her her sock one in the 75 25 415 yards it's a three ply so 100 percent uh 100 grams yeah and this one was so pretty too like my daughter was like but i'm gonna actually leave this for a giveaway because, I mean, I did ask Andy and I was like, do you mind if I share your love, your love that you're sharing with me, if I can share it also with my, my viewers or for the giveaway for the shawl cow. So this is actually going to go to our giveaway pile. So we can, um, so I can pass on the love. So whenever, whoever wins this, this is from Andy 
and she is so sweet and so kind and oh they're so special i will have to figure out what i'm gonna do with these because these are very special these two that i'm actually gonna keep um they're very special to me so since let's wrap up our going to my local yarn store if i'm gonna be at my yarn store i'm gonna get opal yarn i know that at least there i can get these and their price reasonably i mean it's hard sometimes to get opal here because it is a german um a company um these are self-striping but not not only self-striping but a lot of it is also has little designs in it so if you can get your hands on opal yarn um uh, highly recommend it it's really good i love rustic yarn but i cannot pass up beautiful indie dyed yarn it's just oh it's just so hard for me so sorella who's actually located in north carolina she only lives probably an hour away from me but they don't have a like a brick and mortar store it's all online and they were having so this is the sun uh sun soaked collection and look at this pink so I only got one. I mean, here's the thing. I don't, I'm not going to get a sweater quantity of this yarn. It's just not, maybe one day, I don't know. But it's, it's, even though her prices are pretty reasonable. Her skeins are $28 for 100 grams and it comes for 438 yards. I think that's really reasonable. So it's really good. And I love I do like her yarn. I've used it before and they're great. So this took a little while because it was a pre-order. And if you can hear that, that's not fighting. They're playing. But um, it, it's a pre-order. So it took a while to come. So I bought this like, I don't even know, but a little while ago. And this is the colorway Laguna. Oh, it's right there. It's huge. I already showed it to you. Laguna. That's the name of it it's beautiful absolutely beautiful and believe me there are lots of different ones but also if you know me already if you've watched this a little bit um i like speckles i like variegated for socks but my favorite is tonals but i like everything so very confusing then they had their summer to uh, collection and these are the summer tonals that they had and look at this. This is not even like color that I usually wear, but I couldn't pass it up. Look at these. They're called mojitos or mojito. And these are this is the classic sock, and these are their mohair, mohair which is 72, 28, so 72, 28. 72% mohair, 28 silk. This one has 459 yards. And this is a 50 gram one, obviously. Usually mohair is sold by 50 grams. Um, so it's a little bit more expensive, but it also goes a long way. I mean, you get 459 yards. You can make something together with one of these. And so you're good. So you don't always need 100 grams. So you can get away with my... And this is the 100 grams, just like before I used... I mean that I showed you before, and this is their fingering white. And I thought it was beautiful, the colors. The colors are so pretty. I need to figure out what to make. Look at that. I am buying yarn without knowing what to make. But the thing is, this can always go to things that I use. So I can always make a shawl with this, just this. Or a hat, even though I don't wear hats. So I need to really figure this out because, ah, oh, this is so beautiful. And the last but not least, I bought this because this is the Lion Brand. So this is a big company yarn, but I am test knitting for Fox and Folk, but it's a secret knit. It's a secret test. So I can't show you that yet. So her collection that is coming, that her secret collection is coming at the end of the year. Well, not the end, this fall. So whenever that collection is live, I will show you the other thing that I made for her 
and then I'll show you this. But I just wanted to show you the beautiful uh, wool. So this is 100% wool. Because that's the other thing. I was looking for 100% wool. That's my acquisitions. And I won't be able to show you that until a while. But so that's why I wanted to show it to you now. Before we start knitting with it. Or why do I say we? It's me. It's still I start knitting with it. Um... I do have one throwback project. So a while back, I wanted to do a, another section of my podcast that's there. It was called Throwback Projects. And, but then my pod, but then I did it one time. And then I had so many things that filled my, my podcast. Because, you know, I, I just knitted too many things that there was just no way I could talk more. But this time, I, I still don't know how long I'm taking for this. But I did want to show you and the reason why i wanted to so show some throwback projects is so we can highlight some patterns that maybe you haven't seen in that, at all if you're new at knitting or that you haven't seen for a while because they are a few years old so today's pattern is petit knits so this is from petit knit and it's called carla's dress and you can guess it's my daughter's dress and I made it two years ago, 2019, like March, this is 2019. And I might take a picture of it or a little video so you can see. Um, Cause I know it's kind of hard for me to show the whole thing. But this is a very hot pink, but it's actually a really pretty pink. And my daughter looks so good in it. The only thing I can't tell you is what size I made. I don't remember the size. I want to say that I made her the biggest size they had, which might have been a seven. So it could be a little bit big on her. Um, she can still wear this. So she just turned eight and she can still wear it. But at this point, like the sleeves are getting to like here, like here. Uh, lengthwise is still pretty fine. When I made it for her, it went down to like half her calf. And um, and then her the sleeves were about here. So it looked really good. And now it's looking a little bit shorter. But, you know, for girls, we can get away with that. Because you can have a, a sleeve here. And then you can have three-quarter sleeve. And then it still looks good. Um, as long as the length is still, you know, appropriate. Um, I think she can wear this for a little bit longer. Um, I do know the yarn that I use. I use, I use Knit Picks and I use the Brava, the Brava Sport. This called for fingering, but I was like, no, I'm just going to get that one. <laughs> and I don't remember why. I mean, this was like two years ago and I don't, didn't make any notes. I don't know why I chose Sport. I mean, Sport, it's a little bit heavier than fingering for sure. But it, I think, I think this is what I figured, and I might have swatched and f still got gauge, or I might have just been like, she's gonna grow into it, even if it's a little bit big, it's not gonna be that big. So the Brava Sport is a hundred percent acrylic, but it's a really good acrylic actually. If you touch it, it's not mm, plasticky. It's really well done. I think that there that this their Brava is really good. And it is in colorway rouge, or yeah, rouge, is that how you say it? Rouge. And, okay, it comes in 100 grams balls and they're $2.99. That's probably why I got it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it turned out so beautiful, I can't even complain. So I do know that this is a rolled, um, it's rolled, so you do it long and then you turn it in and you make a little casing for, an, uh, an elastic so it has an elastic um and then I believe <sighs> I can't give you a lot of details because it is a paid pattern but I believe you do raglan so you do it from the top down I think now I can't remember how you do it or if you do it from the bottom. Well, um, it's a lot of details that I don't remember for sure, but it does have another rolled hem that you do. 
and this one is done with a pearl stitch in between which I really love because it gives you a very crisp and very good hem and you can see it where you know you're supposed to see where you hemmed it inside because then it gives you a little line that looks really pretty but it's not because um it's not because it went through to the other side it's because you can just see where it is because it's thicker there and it looks really pretty so this is the skirt and she has worn this a lot and the yarn is still going strong so if you're thinking of making this for one of your children i would really recommend this yarn i mean of course you can use 100 percent wool you can use you know hand dyed yarn you can use whatever you want but i have to say if you make it in sport it really is great i loved it and if you can get your hands on knit picks i would highly recommend using this yarn so it still has a little bit of life in it for a little bit longer and my daughter loves it she looks so cute in it this is my throwback project carla's dress by potato knit and we are getting to the end where I talk about some podcasts that I've been enjoying because some of you have made it here because someone else has mentioned me and I want to pass it on. So ever since I started my podcast, I've always mentioned some other podcasters because sharing the love, sharing the obsession of knitting, it's what I'm all about. Let's start with Magda. So Magda from Magda Knits. She's from the UK and she has a podcast. I can't remember how long she's been podcasting, but I don't think a lot of time because she only has a handful of podcast episodes. So my guess is not tons of time. But she's really, really nice. We've become friends on Instagram. We talk and she's also make, making the Hamlibby uh, shawl and we, for the cow, and we've talked back and forth. I enjoy her episodes. She makes really beautiful things. She dyed her own yarn for uh, a sweater that she made. It turned out so beautiful. So go check her out. She's lovely. I think she's lovely. So go check out Magda. The other one is Lucy from This Nanny Knits. She's a brand new one, and I, but I've really enjoyed her episodes. She works as a nanny. That's why she's called this Nanny Knits. And um, she loves knitting with hand dyed yarn. So go check her out if you want to see beautiful projects with beautiful yarn. And she's just really nice. She also likes to knit socks. Probably why I like her. Because <laughs> I like knitting socks. Then the other one is Kat from Cat Kelly Crafts. And I love Kat. She's from Northern Ireland and won her accent. Love it. Second, um, she's a very fairly new knitter. I, I believe she started knitting last December. Was it? But definitely during the pandemic. And she started a podcast very recently. I think she has three episodes. I've watched them all. And she's really, really nice. She's also part of our Cal, which... I'm dying. Of course, I, I, I love having lots of people in, so I'm super excited. And um, she's really nice. You should go check her out. I believe she's a mom. And um, the projects that she's making for being a brand new knitter, it's absolutely amazing. I love all these people who have embraced the knitting and have become just as obsessed as I am. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing it. If you love it, you love it. And the last one I want to talk about is Nikki. She lives in Canada and her podcast is Knitting with Cat Hair. And she's really sweet. She's really nice. I believe she has a daughter. Her latest episode or one of her, I think it was her latest episode she did with her mom and they were outside and her mom also knits. She, her mom is not always in her episodes, but in this one she was and she's made some beautiful color work um projects and let me think oh she's also doing a hum libby um shawl 
in this beautiful kind of like yellow color and she's just really nice so i believe she's from canada so those are the four podcasters that you can go check out if you want i will try to link their their podcast down below and i usually do that so you can just straight up go to their podcast and last but not least i'm gonna announce our winner so let me show you what the winner gets so this bag that i made myself um when i made myself a bag i made one for you guys because i knew that at one point i wanted to give you that and then i also got you some of the craft and this is i figured okay if i did kind of like a grayish color it could go with anything you want so and this is color luna with two ends and this goes to melissa Fredrich. Fredrich? frederick Frederick. Don't know exactly how you say it, but I will post your picture and your comment right here. Uh, thank you so much for your comment. And so many of you have also made it to the beach already, which of course makes me so jealous. I hopefully, hopefully I can make it to the beach this year because I love the beach. I absolutely love the beach. Maybe it's because I grew up in Chile and literally our whole country is has coast <laughs> so for me the ocean is just it calls me you know like as we're getting close to the beach i open the windows and i need to smell i you can smell it you can smell the ocean and i'm not talking fishy smell it's like the breeze smells different there's that saltiness and i mean seriously like before i can even see it but i know we're getting close i open the window and i know we're there and it's it just makes me so happy. My kids now are also obsessed with the beach. And when we open the window, they know. Like they they're like, smells like the ocean. It's just a thing. It you can you can smell it. If you know, you know. And it is a smell I love. So hopefully, I mean, even if I just go for the day. I live about three and a half hours away from the closest beach or so, and about four and a half hours from Outer Banks, which I love more. But um, whatever it is, I will make it to the beach this year, even if it's for a day. So I think that's all I have for you. Um, so Melissa, if you can contact me at littlemonkeysatme at gmail.com, please let me know. Or if you have Instagram, you can go over there and you can send me a DM so I can get your information so I can send this to you. If for some reason she doesn't contact me because I don't have a way of contacting her. And then next time, so in two weeks, I will have to draw another person. So either way, I think that's all I have for today. Have a wonderful weekend because today is Friday. Yay. And I hope you're enjoying. Please join our cow. It is fun to knit with friends. It is fun to see what other people are making. I hope you enjoy this episode and... Happy knitting. Bye-bye.